and gentlemen, welcome to the 30th Cocktail Hour here at the gym. I'm Tim Klega, your MC and bartender tonight. And let me introduce you to Damian Lighton and Nicole Cassessa. Hello. Welcome home. Oh, my goodness. Cheers. Ah, oh, cheers. Wow, I came back. <laughs> well, oh. here we are, 2021. We survived oh the fucking 2020. God. Oh my God. Who would have thought it would have gone this long? <laughs> we had hopes to put it. <laughs> I know. We did the New Year's Eve extravaganza in right. hopes that that would like be our. Our farewell and welcome to 2021, and let's open the theater. But here we welcome are again. Back. We <laughs> took a month off and too. It's February. <laughs> well, it is February. Oh, here comes the baby. Moosey. Oh, Moosey. Come here. Come show everyone your outfit. Come on, Moosey. Come on, your outfit, Moosey. Oh, look at the Moosey. Come on, come here. Come on, Holly Moosey. You want an ice cube? It's got whiskey on it. You want an ice cube? Moosey, why are you being so shy? Oh, there she is. It's better when it has whiskey on it, isn't it? Auntie Lee got her a special mm. Valentine's Day oh, outfit. Who's Moose? Hey, Damien, look, she'll do anything for a drink just like you. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the truth, Timmy? So we're so excited. It's a whole new format. We're doing things a little differently. We, we named a cocktail hour, and then some of them are like four hours long. But we are actually going to do a cocktail, <laughs> cocktail hour. Hours and hours and hours. And we have an MC with us tonight, Mr. Tim Klega, who's Hello. also our bartender. Hello, everybody. And fun fact about Tim Klega, I went to bartending school, so I feel very comfortable right here. And not <laughs> down there, where some of you have been. <laughs> And we've got the boys back tonight. Thank you so much. Our fabulous musicians back here. So Richard, what's 2021 been like for you thus far? Fuck this. <laughs> I cannot, I can't believe hey, we're Gary. still doing this fucking show. I <laughs> thought that we'd have a nice break. I thought things would get back to normal. It was supposed to be like a two week thing. <laughs> Way back when, just to kind of get us, uh, you know, settled into the new this and that. It's going to go on for a year. <laughs> I'm so sick of you two assholes. <laughs> this brain dead over here has been driving me crazy with his shitty rhythms for, since like about April. I just want to get the fuck out of here and go home. And Jerry, if you're keeping score, I think that's four for me. <laughs> that's four for me in the first inning, so I've got a quick lead on the new season's total. So. Wow. Well, wow, there we wow. go. Now, um, Jeff Siegel. Oh, you were going to say something else? Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, here we go again. It's, it's, um, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I thought we'd be done with it by now, but it's just good that we have a place to come and just visit with friends and get shit-faced and do some music and have a lot of fun. Hope it doesn't go too much longer, but I've been saying that for a year as well. So, um, <laughs> Well, it's really not going to go much longer because we've got a really we've special surprise. Up, don't we? We're yeah, going to open the theater up in April. Brand new what? Movie. Say what is this? Let's get the scoop, shall we? <laughs> April 15th, we're going to open in a tent outside. Wow. We've been talking with some of our city council members. Um, the city themselves don't know yet, but they will by tomorrow. <laughs> and um, we're going to do a tent outside, and we're going to bring a very special, one of your favorite, favorite shows back. I don't want to give it away just yet, but um, if you listen to the background music, you might huh? know what's coming. And um, we're very excited about that. Right? We're ready. We're ready. You're ready. We're all ready. I'll tell you, what an ego boost the other day. We got to meet with our very dear friend, Sean Escalante, who is an amazing interior designer as well as a performer. And um, we were actually. On cocktail hour a oh, several of times, times mm -hmm. and done several shows with us. Yes. We actually met with him because we are redoing the Tiffany Room. Ooh. Yes! We Ooh. are bringing in designers and we're putting a lot of money into it. And that's our first redo of the theater. And that should be done by the time we open the theater in April. And then we hope to redo the theater itself with new carpeting and painting. Um, we'll just see how all that goes, but we are starting to rip the Tiffany room out. Like actually, Nicole got in there the other day and started ripping that thing apart. So we've got a lot of things coming up, and we're very excited about that, but we went down to Louis for brunch, and we got to see so many of our amazing patrons down there. 
It Mrs. was a Krebs, little overwhelming. It really was. And Mrs. <laughs> Krebs is down there. There's so many people, and they just kept saying, we're so happy to be out. When is the theater opening? Get the fucking theater open. Let's do this. We're working on it. We're working on it. Yeah, we're working really hard. And our goal so. is April 15th. Um, as soon as we have the final permits and everything ready, tickets will go on sale, and you are going to come back home. And we're going to do something real special out there, aren't we, Nicole? Sure are. We're going to do dinner theater. <laughs> oh, Moose found some more eyes. <laughs> She's having her own dinner theater right now. So I don't Jeff, know where she got it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffy, how are you back there, my little Jewish tornado? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing good. Um, my school gave me this wonderful mask. I'm modeling it tonight. They won't give me the vaccine, but they'll give me a mask. <laughs> so this, this is better than nothing. I guess so. so I, I Shouldn't you be grateful that you're, like, young enough for something? Well, uh, <laughs> Speaking of young, don't we have a birthday coming up? Oh, <laughs> oh, oh smooth! Oh, it's not young, not young. <laughs> not oh, young at all. Oh. <laughs> um, but before we get to the birthday girl, can I just say I am so sorry. I think I got in trouble this week because I shared with Angie something very special that Nicole and I got to do of taking about a private jet out to Las Vegas. And I'm like, oh, if you're going to go to Vegas, you should take this private jet. Yeah. And next thing I know, I get a message from Jeff. We're taking the fucking private jet out to Vegas. Thank you. Yeah, I was really surprised at that whole experience. Um, Did you uh, love it? Yeah, well, I haven't yet. gone on it yet, so I don't know if I will love it or not. But um, I, I do it. know that I had no clue. And I do know that you talked about it during one of the episodes. I said, ah, that's kind of cool. The next thing I know, you and Angie were kind of working in cahoots. And Angie said... No, that's a great idea. Funny and how it, you weren't invited. No, no, Angie invited us for the next <laughs> one. But she said we're going to go out yeah. and we're going to buy a new house out there. We're going to name it the Damien and Nicole house. And, and then we're going to take you out to see it. Well, we have been looking at property out there. I know, I know. <laughs> but now we're going to go on, on on Nicole's private jet. <laughs> so thank you, Nicole. I, mean, I, I will, hey, um, one more thing. I will I will tell everybody about the experience once once I have oh, it. Oh, yes, and, definitely. And I know I've heard really positive things about it. I'm so grateful I don't have to take off my shoes, don't have to take off my belt, don't have to empty my pockets, don't have to take the jewelry <laughs> off. They feed you for free. Yeah. And and they give you... And it's kosher. Hey! It could be better. Well, I am. Huh? Now, Jeff... Who is our musician that's back with us tonight oh, for a second our, time? Yeah, wonderful Joe. We love Joe. Yeah, we, we Yay, Joe. Love Joe. Joe. Yeah. So, Joe, you've been working on some big band music, and you're writing some musical theater stuff right now. That's How's right. that going? It's uh, it's good. It's a, it's a process. Lots of uh, instruments to write for. But, so, uh, what are you playing tonight? Is that a, is that a tenor sax? That's a is tenor that a saxophone, mm -hmm. and I got, got the clarinet here as Very well. Very nice. Yeah. So, with cool. woodwinds, how many instruments do you have to learn to play? Well, uh, depends how many, how many ever you want. Um, oh my God! There's a lot. Uh, yeah, because I have a saxophone, clarinet. I also have a flute here around here somewhere mm -hmm. too. I've started oboe, and there's some who do oh, the soon. Wow. But, uh, That's awesome. Yeah, so it's as many as you're willing to go. You I've know? always been so impressed with reed players because they have to play so many different instruments, and and they're just they're all so different. I mean, the drummer just like bangs things out back there. I know. That's all. But he, he just thinks yeah. he can play the drum, and they're all the same. I, I exactly. Am a band. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Uh, but <laughs> awesome. Well, welcome back, Joe. Thanks thank for you. coming back. Yeah, My thanks. God, you're our holiday guy for New Year's Eve and now Valentine's Day. Yeah, and I, and I think have. Joe's going to be joining us for several I know, of our tapings. I know. So I hear you're in so for at least four, five, or five, four or five right. tapings. Yeah, so we're excited about that. And, um, so welcome amazing. home. Have a cocktail. And Gladly. speaking of cocktails, Nicole, you know what? I think that I would like to do a little shot tonight. What would do you do? think? Oh, do I have a cocktail Cupid someplace? Cupid, isn't he charming and sweet? Racy! I know, who would have thought it? Brilliant. Happy Valentine's Day! What a treat! That was delicious. It was.
So, Damien? Yes. Damien, what is the show about tonight? Oh, oh our well. Theme. It's all about tell love. With the arrow it's all about hair. Valentine's. <laughs> Beaded and bedazzled gown of Nicole. I know. Look, first off, can I just say how fucking fabulous you look? Woo! Now, hey, Damien, who I, put that lovely ensemble together? I, just I was going to say, up. like, <laughs> did you pull this out of your closet? Did you pull this out of Timmy's closet? Like, where did this come from? It did come from Timmy's closet. <laughs> you better watch out, because I've seen other things come out of that closet. <laughs> I've been out of that closet for decades, please. <laughs> Uh, but God only knows what's left in there. <laughs> Funny how I can't give away all my side. secrets. I'm only a newlywed. <laughs> oh, you are? I know you are. Coming up on one year. One year. Congratulations. One year. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank so much you. love. So much love. But no, for reals, there are two, well, there's three gentlemen who put you together tonight, and they're going to be really mad because I'm going to ask them to come up on stage. Uh -oh. They're not mic, so they can't talk. Ready. So come on, boys. Come on up here. Come on. Get come your on. fucking asses come up here. Did you God do your hair damn it. Makeup, girls? Please, Rob. All right, Brian, good. Oh my God! So put together these looks for us. So and this is Brian Milano. It really takes on Brian army. is our makeup yeah, artist and hair artist extraordinaire, and made her look so fabulous tonight. Luis and Rocco. Luis and Rocco, oh, our costume designers oh extraordinaire. Um, so so fabulous. Um. I, I, I wish I had a mic for you. Can I can I steal a mic from something, Dan? I'm getting in a lot of trouble. You want to talk into me? I, I was gonna say like you can talk into me, boys. Okay. Yeah, just come here. Okay. So. Oh, just come here and come talk. on over. So I know it's hard to tell which one it is. Luis but... Rocco, what was your inspiration for Nicole tonight? Um, well, both of us really like White Christmas, and Edith Head is one of my favorite costume designers, and. I was really inspired by um, a couple of the costumes she's done, and I wanted to give something that really said, I don't know, eat his head. Who <laughs> um, needs uh, head? What? <laughs> Someone needs head. He only hears one thing. <laughs> um, no, yeah, um, I wanted to show some of uh, Nicole's elegance while also sewing something a little bit more fun. I have um, <laughs> um, Not to mention, she has rocking shoulders and neck. Yeah. So, and, you know. Well, Show it off. The thing that I'm so amazed by is that you made this like from nothing, from the yeah. pants, from the pants, from the nylons to the gloves. You made the gloves, everything. The the it's they it's made just so the gloves. It's just Thank fabulous. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. So you design it, you create it, and uh -huh. then you tell Rocco. To press and stone. <laughs> <laughs> the little things I don't want to do. <laughs> yeah. Where to buy lunch? Where to buy lunch? Where to drive me? Um, but no, yeah, he's been a he's been really supportive in kind of providing me with projects and taking me out of like mental spaces that I don't belong in and showing me that I can do things like this. And and then um, you totally designed me tonight. I styled you. I love it. I yeah. styled me. Is that what they say? I styled it. <laughs> and I love your headpiece. Oh, oh, thank you. Oh. Also, yes. Yeah, it makes Nicole's look. Um, yeah. But yeah, I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun working with this, and I love doing things for the gym all the time. Well, welcome back home, and are you ready to start the year off? Because Obviously, yeah. you are working, and you have been building and designing costumes for Patsy Klein. Yeah. Hint, hint, wink, wink. <laughs> um, and we're building all new Patsy Klein costumes this year, and you've yeah. been like working away and stitching away already and designing. Yeah, um, well, well, have... Since you gave it away, I didn't. I <laughs> didn't say that's the show we're doing in April. I just said he's building it out. Maybe we'll building show a thing. picture or two. As a yeah, preview. we're um, we're building two um, gowns right now for Nicole that she'll be wearing. Um, two will be featured in a photo shoot I think we're having in March. Yep. Um, we're two iconic looks Patsy has worn herself. Not that yep. we're doing Patsy. Anything, but Not yet, but maybe. Um, so stay tuned and look forward to seeing those soon. So Brian, hi. Hello, my love. We're so happy to have you with us again. Thank you. One of our dancers, performers. You've been with us for what, like four years now as an yeah. actor, performer. Well, what was your five first show? years? It was music. Um, man with OMG! <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> you remember <Shipsy? laughs> So Who can forget? I love the fact that. We like went to our designers here and we're like, what's the makeup look that you want? And Louise sent me pictures I sent to you and then you created this whole thing for both Nicole and I. What's your inspiration when you're working? Um, always just scrolling through Instagram, seeing the makeup people that I follow and just getting that inspiration from there. I mean, as soon as I can see the outfit, which is my inspiration for Nicole's look, once I see it, I'm like, okay, I already know what I want to do. I just look through my past as to the looks I've done, the looks I've seen, and it looks gorgeous, honestly. 
Well, I just want to thank you boys so much for making this decrepit old woman who's turning 47 this year. How dare you? Oh, wait, what, 37? Um, you, I mean, what a beautiful creature to begin to create for. But it, for anyone to make this woman even more beautiful, thank you so much for doing it and doing this. It's just so fabulous. Um, talk to us about some of the fabrics and, like, what is this? Like, what is this? Um, so Let me get in. <laughs> lies, <laughs> Christina, <laughs> lies. Yeah. Um, but this is a, a pearl tool um, with a golden flock uh, sequin thing. Um, and then we have layers and layers of tool underneath her. Nicole, can you stand up so you can show them what yes. the dress is fully supposed to look like? Do a little turn. Now, wait, can you on. fix, wait, let, wait, <laughs> let's not show that side of it. <laughs> fix her so she looks right. Now do like a full turn for everyone so they can see. <laughs> so how many hours, right to me, how many hours did it take to create this? Um, I would say, it took me a total of four days to put it all together. And then maybe two days to just kind of stone, fine tune, hand stitch things together that need to be put in and piece it all together. Well, it's beautiful. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you all of you for bringing this together for us and making oh. this so special, not just for us, but for all of you at home. And when we talk about the gem, when we talk about what you do by being supportive of the theater, by giving and, and, and being here, being present, <laughs> we are creating a, a, a world for people to not only have work in a time where there is not a lot of work left, but more importantly, we are creating artists that are going to go on way past the Gem Theater. So thank you guys so much. We love you. Thank you, boys. Thank you. Now get the fuck off the stage. Uh, how amazing. There's so I much will love. Say, it is such an honor. Louise came to us a couple weeks ago and said, are you guys going to do a Valentine's show? We were like, we're thinking about coming back in February and, uh -huh. and doing a show. And he said, can I build something for you? Who says no to that? Exactly. Are you kidding? They hand made this I know. for me. I mean, I feel so undeserving. And I hope to be wearing it with this. Some dignity. <laughs> what I have been drinking. Uh, but I mean, my God, like what an honor. But, like, I mean. Well, not just an honor, but my God. I. They, they made the gloves. It's it's all handmade. I, I mean, it's mind blowing. Like it I, really is. I love that after 20 years of us working together in theater, and and that you still get excited by other people's talent. A hundred percent. Well, I will tell you, I can't. I can barely thread a needle. So it's the- You can barely speak tonight. I can. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but- Let's I get a needle some thread. <laughs> My job's done. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you. But- No, you know, honestly. My eyelashes are sticky. Um, but uh, I will say like, we do a lot in theater. Yeah. We direct. We dance, we musically direct, we paint sets, we whatever. Costumes? No. Nope. It's something we <laughs> we don't. I can shop. But you can shop it. I shop. But I, I literally can barely thread a needle. Yeah. So the fact that like someone Well, I can do a whip stitch. Look yeah. Looked at me and said, I'm gonna hand make you a costume, like Yeah. That's amazing, so brilliant, cool. but how <laughs> oh, he said, my mom would never let me have a Barbie doll, so you are my Barbie Hello, doll now. I have lots of Barbie dolls. Am I your Ken? <laughs> <laughs> yes, because no. you are just like Ken, anatomically the same. <laughs> yeah. Anatomically like incorrect. Like you'd know. Okay, You're here we welcome. go. Ah! But no, but, seriously, yeah. I mean, being that I have performed here, yeah. and, and my first show here was Chicago, and having costumes handmade for you, from head to toe, oh yeah, was it just makes you feel amazing, and it helps pull your entire character together. And so, you know, you, a lot of other theaters in the area will rent a, an entire national tour full of costumes, which have seventeen different labels in them of different people who've worn them, and you know they're tailored, they're taken in and let out to fit you. But yeah. to have an entire costume built for you, 
like uh, every time that we're here at the gym is just, it's spectacular. So It's awesome. And guys. it's spectacular. It's amazing. Bravo. But it is fun. And it that's is the one fun. thing that I think One More Production is all about. I think it's fun, even in the morning, in the evening. Ain't we got fun? Your transitions <laughs> are just. Take it away, oh, Richard. Is that, a song? Oh, shit. That, that was a song. <laughs> there we go. Oh, my God. Don't fuck this up, Nicole. I started, right? Yep. My God, my eyes. Not much money, oh, but honey, ain't we got fun? If wifey wishes to go to a place, better be the one more. Don't wash the dishes, <laughs> just throw them away. Woo! In the winter, in the summer, don't we have fun? <laughs> Things are glum and getting glummer. Still, we have fun. There's nothing sure and the rich get rich And the poor get children In, in the, the meantime, meantime, in between time Ain't we got fun? Speaking of fun, I have so many people to thank yeah. For allowing Sally. us to have so a good amount of fun Okay Natalie Archer donated $10 to the Gem Theater Thank, thank you, Natalie, Natalie. Thomas Allen donated $25 and said, watching the recent Tad episode of Cocktail Hour made me realize how long it's been since my last donation. Wow. Way to go, Jem. Thank you. Thank you. Russell, Russell Kavanaugh, $30. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Cheryl Donchi, $500. Oh, we love you, Cheryl. We got to get martini soon. Mike Busco, five hundred dollars. Thank you so much. Cheers. Tina Jackson, ten dollars. Thank you, Tina. We love that. Rotary Club of Garden Grove, two hundred and fifty dollars. Thank you, Rotary. We love you guys so much. Megan Galloway, one thousand dollars. Thank you, Megan. Thank you. Garrett, um, no, George and Terry Zeber. We love the Zebers, such good friends of ours. $150. Thank you, Thank you guys so much. Sandy Orozco, again, another $50. Thank, Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you. And are you ready for this one? David Weinberg and Vera, who have been friends of ours, they've been following me for 25 years. Dear, dear friends. He gave us $5,000 in memory of Vera. Thank you, David. We love you, and we will always love you and Vera. Thank you guys so, so much. Amazing. Dropped a bundle on a pony. Now we got to eat bologna. Temper. Ain't we got fun? Now hear this. I bought another Paris hat. What we'd have to pay for that? <laughs> Ain't we got fun? I'm hysterical. We only started as mama and pop. Are we down hard? I'd, I'd say that we're, we're not. not. Mama's coming here to say, hey, where are you going? That away. We'll have some fun. I bought a Cadillac on credit. Now the sheriff's gonna get it. Well, he'll have so much fun. There's nothing sure the rich get rich. And the poor pay bingo. The rich get brushed. And the poor get brushed off. The rich like painting. And the poor get COVID. We walk to the bar, talk to Timmy Plaga, get another cocktail. Well, and it is. You go to that side. You know this is my good side. Oh my God! What a diva! Well, let so, me put out my tools. Uh oh! You have to come prepared. You know. <laughs> and don't ask me what these are for, but they just look fun. <laughs> Hello. So it's Valentine's Day. We're talking about.
about fun. Yeah. And you know what I love? Puppy love. Yes! I love my puppies. I love puppy love. And do you know what we have tonight? Do we have puppies? We have Ozzy and friends who oh. are the people who gave us our Holly Moose. <laughs> and quite a moose. Oh, quite a moose. <laughs> Just a tiny thing. Just a baby. So she was yeah. only going to be 18 pounds. Yeah. Now she's 48. But we love them, and we called them on the phone, and we want to say thank you so much for giving us so much love. We want to give some love back to you. And do you know what they have out there waiting for us? Do they have puppies? They have three <laughs> puppies and three adult dogs. Oh. And we get to meet them and play with them and talk to Nancy and their fabulous friends tonight and learn all about it. Well, while you're telling them all about that, let me just make you guys a couple of cocktails. I would love another food. cocktail. All right. Let me just make this all the friends. Here. We're going to put some stuff online for you so you can see where we get them. He's going to make another cocktail. And before you know it, we're going to be back with Ozzy and friends and loving dogs. We love you guys. Happy Valentine's Day. There you go, sir. Oh, well, look at that. And there you go, madam. Yay, double fisting. <laughs> just that Like a good Valentine's Day. And don't forget to tip your bartender. Ah, just a tip. Well, here we are, puppy love. What a Valentine's present for Nicole. Look at how happy she is. So we have such special guests with us tonight. We have Cece, we have Rex, we have Buster, we have Gonzo, we've got Asia right here, and then over here we have little Freddy, who I just love so much, Freddy. Oh, and we also have Sierra with us tonight, and we've got Alice, and we have Nancy. And I have to tell you, Nancy, Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for what you do. Ozzy and friends, we found you because um, Nicole found our lovely Holly Moose from you. And um, we are just so grateful for everything that you do and you have brought us so much love and so much joy by giving us this dog. And not just us, but all the people who come to the theater now know Holly Moose. And, and she's in all of our shows with us, and we are just so grateful for you. And when we knew we were coming back, we wanted to bring you on because your animals are so loving, and we want to help you find homes for them. Oh, thank you, Damien. Thank you. So how did Ozzy and Friends start? Who's Ozzy? Well, Ozzy and Friends started uh, back in December of 2016, mm -hmm. and it happened after the loss of my dog, DJ. Aww. Yeah, DJ died of prostate cancer. And he was only 10, and I had him as a puppy. No, nice my boy. boy. Oh, I boy. know. He's a little boy. shy. I know this he is. is. And uh, I just I started networking dogs, uh, pledging money to them, and then uh, someone told me that I should start a nonprofit to help them. And I said, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So I just did it. And, um, and I started it by myself, and then Joe is the co-founder, and he joined me in um, April of 2017. This is Joe over here, right? Hi, Joe. How are you? You can give a wave. Joe's like, <laughs> I, I don't like to talk, but I'll wave, and, <laughs> and I'll hold Gonzo over there. Yeah, so basically that's what happened. DJ died, and then I just felt like it was, um, I don't know, a good way to remember him. Mm -hmm. And I started the nonprofit, and Ozzy was actually one of the very first pit bulls I rescued from the Carson Animal Shelter mm -hmm. when I first started. So, how many animals do you think since 2018 that you've rescued Ooh, and found homes let's for? Let's see. Um, last year, we adopted out over 600 dogs. Wow! Oh my God! And, and I will tell you, one of the things that I'm so amazed about is that when we got our holly moose from you, not only did we get our holly moose, but you came with such great services. We were able to get her all her shots, all her vaccines. We were able to put the tracking device inside of her. Her chip. And her yeah. chip. And then we were also able to get, get her, her spayed. spayed. So you, for how much is it to adopt an animal? Well, it depends. Seniors go for about $150. Mm -hmm. um, our adult pit bull shepherds, um, they go for about $200, $250, mm -hmm. $350. And then um, some of our puppies go for $450 to $675. So it just depends on the age, the breed. Mm -hmm. um, 
Well, the amazing thing is, is with that, Next, you get all those boy. services together, which by the time you're done for spaying and chipping and getting all your shots, I mean, it covers itself. Yeah. So yeah, the profit is very, very small. Uh, well, if there's exactly. any. If there's, well, yeah. we own a theater, so we understand that exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, I, 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 I hate to say this, but it is called Cocktail Hour. And I noticed that you ladies don't have cocktails. Would you like to meet our Cupid for the night? And have yeah, a cocktail? totally. Come Ooh. on, Cupid cocktail. Yeah. Oh, oh, I love that we're doing shots tonight. Cocktail Hour, and thank you so much. Thank you for bringing your beautiful animals with us, but more importantly, thank you for what you ladies and gentlemen are doing. Um, I would like to introduce, I, I'm so sorry, it's, what, I'm sorry, what is your name? Connie. Connie. Connie was the one that we went and met in Cyprus that had our holly moose. And I have to tell you, you said she's such a good girl and she just loves my slipper. She just loves my slipper. A year later, I go to put my slipper on in the morning and I find it in the backyard. She's still, <laughs> none of my other shoes because she knows not to touch the good ones. <laughs> but oh. she loves the slipper. And I just want to say, especially to you, thank you so much. You were so welcoming to me and Nicole coming into your home <laughs> and introducing us to her. And we just love her and, and all of you and what you do. So how many animals, so, so Sierra, how long have you been involved with the organization? I started working there at the end of December of 2019. Okay, wow. and what's your passion for animals? How did you fall in love with dogs? Well, when I was in high school, I started volunteering at Pasadena Humane Society, mm -hmm. and I ended up just being there like every day, every week, and then I eventually just found this place, and then I started working here as a dog walker, and now I do pretty much everything. That's amazing. And Alice, what about you? I started in um, November of 2019, and I have always been um, volunteering with dogs for several years, different mm -hmm. rescues, but I found Ozzy, and I love it, because I love everybody, and I, I love the dogs. Um, I, I love that they're um, non-breed um, specific. Mm -hmm. The other rescues that I work mm -hmm. at were breed specific mm -hmm. rescues. Mm -hmm. And this encompasses every, every type of dog, so it's really fun. So I have to tell you, with theater, we're like a family. And we have our good moments, we have our bad moments, we love each other, we holler each other. Like, do you find that you have your own family here as well? Yes, we are We are family. Yeah. We love like family, and we act like family, and we... <laughs> we fight like family? Yeah. Fight like family. Fight. Good. <laughs> So how many dogs do you own personally that are your personal I, pets? I own one English Bulldog. One English oh. Bulldog. And how, boy or girl? It's a girl. And how old is she? She's nine and a half. Oh, oh awesome. My Nicole and I, well, I have pictures of me as a baby in the crib at like months old with dogs. I have never known a day in my life without dogs. And I had huge dogs. I had small dogs. I've had all kinds of dogs. And then when Nicole and I became friends and we lived together a very long time ago, she actually, Nicole actually got bit by a dog. Tell your story, Nicole. I got bit, my, well, my earliest memory in life is being bit by a dog in my face at three years old. Ooh. And wow. Nicole? Um, and I was afraid of dogs my entire <laughs> life growing up. Um, mm -hmm. I never had dogs until I was 19. And uh, we went to a pet store back when that was a thing. Yeah. And one day walked in and we saw Lola, who was a chihuahua, and got her. Honestly, we were painting my front bathroom at the time. I've got like dog hair in my lips. <laughs> <laughs> we were painting my front bathroom at the time and we went to Target. Next to the Target was um, this pet store. It was a pet store. And Nicole walked in and they locked eyes on each other. Uh, I I truly believe that like an an animal chooses you. Yeah. 
And um, Lola was our first dog. She was a Chihuahua. She was a Chihuahua, uh, and she was amazing. We had her for what, 17 years? Damien and I have gone on to have a, a tribe of dogs. Oh yeah, all different sizes. And, and they've since um, transitioned all into rescues. We yeah. have Huck. We have. Uh, we found Huck one day. Olive. Huck Huckleberry was probably about 14, 15 we have years Holly. old. We were out to dinner one night with some patrons about 10, 12 years ago. No, it was, it was right after the fire, right? So it was 10 years ago, 11 years ago, 10 years ago. And we saw this dog running through the street and we tried to catch him, we couldn't catch him. And it was Trask and Brookhurst. It was a very busy street. And I told Nicole, I'm like, there's nothing else we can do, we've tried. And I opened the door for Nicole to get into the car and she got in the car and this dog ran through eight lanes of traffic diagonally, oh. jumped in her lap. So we were on our way home. And at the time we had Ruby, which was our Boston Terrier. We had Lola. Um, and did we have Roxy already? No, we didn't have Roxy yet. And I told her, I'm like, okay, we're gonna take the dog to the vet tomorrow. We're gonna find the owner of this dog and we're gonna... So when we got home, she was crying. I said, why are you crying? And she said, when I was a little girl, I would always pray that God would send me a dog. <laughs> and today he finally did. And I said, fuck, <laughs> I've got another dog. <laughs> so that's how we got Huck. And then one day, cool. Roxy, our little chihuahua was, I had this neighbor across the street and they were throwing this, I thought a stuffed toy in the air. And they had this big Samoyed at the time that was jumping up trying to get it. Well, they dropped the toy and it was a baby, a puppy, a little chihuahua. <gasps> So I picked her up and I took her home and the kids said, that's my dog. I said, no, it's not. It's my dog now. So the dad came home from work about six o'clock in the night and started banging on my front door and said, would you stole my fucking dog? You, I'm like, do you want to know what your kids were doing? And I told him, he said, will you please keep this dog and raise it across the street from my children so they know every single day what they did? And we did that, Nicole and I did that. Wow. We raised that dog. Unfortunately, and then we got Ruby, our Boston Terrier, who we loved, who was such a part of the theater. But Excellent. in the last two and a half years, we've lost all three of our girls. But we found Holly, and we've got Olive, which was another rescue. Um, and we just appreciate so much what you guys do. So, Nancy, how many animals do you have right now that need homes? Well, we have about um, <laughs> 22. I'm so sorry, can I just steal Freddy for a little while? <laughs> Oh, I so said I'm not gonna take a baby home today. I really said that. There you go. That was a conversation Nicole and I had. <laughs> That's Freddy. Freddy, sweetheart. We love him. <laughs> Freddy's how old? A year? Freddy is, um, it was a uh, one. He's two. Rex. He's two. Now, how do we find Freddy? Well, we have a web. How did we rescue him? Yeah. Uh-uh, Buster. Shh, no. <laughs> well, we save a lot of dogs from the streets of Mexico, mm -hmm. uh, from Baja California, Tijuana, uh, Rosarito, uh, Mexicali, and we also save a lot of dogs from Central California that are strays running in the fields of Tulare County. And But Freddy is actually a stray that we rescued in Mexico. And he was completely um, matted, uh, flea infested. He had serious skin issues. And so our partners in Mexico basically took him in. You know, we got him vetted, uh, got him medicated so that his skin could clear up. Yeah. And as you can tell, he still has a lot of scabs That's on his skin. Okay. Yeah, those are from fleas and ticks. Uh -huh. But eventually, with two, you know, once he finishes his medicine and his hair starts growing back, he's gonna look beautiful. You know, he's beautiful right now. But yeah. oh, he is. Um, Nicole's dog Olive. We rescued her. It was Buster. so funny. Um, I would see this beautiful dog named Olive on Instagram all the time, and it was a friend of a friend's, like boyfriend's dog. And she got so infected with mange and fleas that she was completely bald and covered in sores. And they called me and said, we're gonna take her to the pound today unless you can find someone who will take her. I said, don't take her to the pound. They're gonna put her to sleep immediately. So I called Nicole, I'm like, you want a dog? This is the dog for you. Nicole took care of her, raised her, washed her. How many times? Every day, two times a day for how oh, many months? Oh, it's the medicated baths every day for 20 minutes a day. It's yeah. the antibiotics, it's the, you know, 
As soon as I felt him, I was like, I've felt that before. Yeah. I, yeah. I know where Freddie is at. Yeah. <laughs> but it's amazing the work that you guys do. I We so appreciate it. And, and we're so grateful that you guys came on the show because Having Holly in our lives has been an incredible experience. I don't know and what ice is. <laughs> oh. oh, he doesn't like boys. Uh -oh. he doesn't, okay. We're he's a little afraid of boys. an advocate of supporting all the animals. Yeah. And we hope that after this episode, like every single one of these dogs gets adopted. So now, how many puppies do we have right now that need help? We have about 24, 25, 28 puppies. 28 puppies. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. Timmy, go away. He doesn't like old men. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a young gay in a bar. Get out of my way. Okay. Come here. Uh, uh, okay. Next. So how many puppies do we have right now? So right now we have about 28 puppies that need a home. And how many adult wow. dogs do we have? We have about uh, like 40. And is wow. it hard to find adult dog homes? Like, w w w is it just open to a... W w well, it's a lot. Um, so what I found is that dogs that are 40 pounds and under mm -hmm. usually get adopted fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. I mean, to the point where we have so many applications, like 30, 40, 50 applications for Freddy. Yeah. And Buster has like five in the last 10 months. So if people can't, because I've got some really good friends, my Buscos, who are here tonight with us, they love dogs, but they live in a place where they can't have dogs. Right. But is there a way that they can help? Is there something that people who can't have a dog can help, like buy treats or beds or food? Yeah, I mean, or... the best way you can do is you can follow us on Instagram. You can always share our, our posts mm -hmm. to your friends and then they can share it. So the more people see the dog and their story and their video, then the more exposure they get mm -hmm. and a better chance they get at finding a home. So what is your goal, ladies, in, in, like, in the future? Like, I know we're finding, what, 600 dogs last year, you said? So what yeah. would be your goal? Like, what is your, your, your final goal? Like, where do you want to go with this? Well, I mean, when we when we first started, you know, it just started with a couple of pit bulls, because obviously, you know, I've always had pit bulls. I still do. I have one, two, three, four pit bulls. Mm -hmm. And um, it just started as something just to help them, because I kept noticing, you know, that they were, a lot of them were at the shelters and getting put down. Well, people are so afraid of pit bulls, but I think it's more about the person that raises them than yeah. about the dog itself. Yeah, it is. It's because, um, are, are these all part pit? Yeah, um, CC is, Buster is, and and Rex, but Rex is mixed with cattle dog. Oh. And even Freddie has a little pit bull in him. Oh, do you, Freddie? You got a little pit bull in you. Kids have poodle, have pit bull. Oh, are you? <laughs> I love that. They're they're just so loving. So, what would be your message for our audience tonight? If because we have so many people who watch and so many people who love what we do here at the theater, Buster. and so many people who love what we love, and we love you, and we love our animals. So, so what would you be your message for them? Well, my message is, you know, when if you're thinking about adopting a rescue dog, you know, it's just really important that your mindset is that you are committed to this animal, and that you're going to be patient and you're gonna be committed to give the dog the amount of time it needs to adjust, to um, decompress, um, that you're going to dedicate time to train the dog, you know, because a lot of them have certain behavioral issues that although we explain that often to the adopter and for real, we really emphasize the importance of, you know, this dog needs training. Rex, sit. This dog needs training. Or um, even like like Rex is fully trained. He spends six weeks in boarding and training with um, with uh, the bully squad. And, um, and he's had a few adopters, and the adopters have failed to follow the instructions of the trainer to the T. So when you don't do that, you know, the dog gets returned to us. So it's just Well, really one of the important. things that I really love that Nicole and I really were so grateful of is that when we met Connie with Holly, Stop. she said, like, 
what would you do if your dog misbehaved? Like, Shh. what? Rex, how, how do you sit. handle that? And the conversation that she had with us Rex, and who they were, they were so clear about that and how we treat our animals and how we talk to our animals. And right. I really appreciated that. Rex. Oh, Rex. <laughs> Well, we are just so grateful. If there's any like last things you want to say, what would you say to our audience about animals? And if you have a passion for animals, then you should pursue it. And if you want to volunteer, that that's always very helpful. Because I know for me, volunteering was really what got me into animals. Mm. Alice. That's amazing. I think if you love your dog, if you want to adopt and you love your dog, you, you need to make sure that you do right by your dog, that you train your dog, and you give the dog a chance to decompress and be in your home for a little while, and try with all your heart to make sure that the dog has a success. I love that. Yeah. What would you like to say? Um, you know, I just, I, I love, Buster, stop, buddy. I just want to say, um, yeah, you know, just give these dogs a chance, give them an opportunity to um, to come around. You know, don't just give up on them after one or two nights, or three nights, because you know things are not what you expect. You know, just like they're getting, they're watching you, and you're watching Tell them. them. Oh, just like you're watching them, and you know they're watching you too, and so. It's really important to, to be patient with them and to give them a chance. They're really great dogs. You know, they take, them take, we've had dogs. Um, we have one dog in particular that is still not adopted since 2017. His name is Gordo. You know, but thanks to COVID, which is like the best thing of COVID, yeah. is that dogs have been getting fostered and adopted like crazy. And so Gordo finally got fostered. After he's been at our facility for over two years, he finally got, you know, in a home where he's being fostered, um, where he's being trained so he can be more adoptable. And so that's all we ask. I mean, if, if you can't adopt, you know, at least you can foster a dog. And, you know, that's a great help too. If you can just foster, volunteer, donate your time. So Nicole. Show a little love. Like, you know? Okay, so Nicole, perfectly, like, how has your life been changed by the animals? Oh my God. Well, like you said, my earliest memory in life is being bit by a dog. Yeah. And it took me until I was 19 to own my own dog. Well, I'll um, never forget. And she was a bit in my hand chihuahua, I mean, she was a tiny baby and I was afraid of her. Oh yes, there was a um, day that she was playing with her. She was playing chase me, chase me, chase me. And then all of a sudden Lola like started chasing her. And I was watching Nicole and she was running in the backyard and then all of a sudden I saw this look of fear come over Nicole's face. And I'm like, oh my God, you're actually running from the dog. <laughs> <laughs> from a little chihuahua. I literally have dog hair and everything stuck in my, in my uh -huh. lipstick. So that's special. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> which is which is not unlike my daily life, but <laughs> I I feel so blessed to have dogs. I feel so blessed to have rescue dogs. I, you know, I have um, my Olive, who is a rescue dog who is high maintenance, and she has been through a lot, and we have been through a lot. I would not give up a single moment with her. And um, from day one, when we started Cocktail Hour, I think day one was Damien interviewing me and talking about some organizations that I enjoyed. And yeah. we had found Holly. We talked about Ozzy and Friends. And um, we've shared you guys with our patrons for the past... 30 episodes. Yeah, year and a half. Nice. And, um, I so appreciate what you do. I've traveled to other countries. I've seen what happens to dogs. Mm -hmm. and, and, and anyone that can take a stand and, and do something right for these animals, 
I so appreciate and I so love. I think it's amazing. And these... These women and what Nancy has founded and what they do has stood for not just animals, but animals in Orange County. And I know that you might not be able to take an animal in. I know that you might not be able to take a dog in. But instead of sending money to one more productions this week, can you send some money to Ozzy and Friends? Can you help them buy some food? Can you help them buy some training classes? Can you help them buy some leashes? Can you make sure that little Freddy gets a home? I, I, I just... Because he might be coming home with us. <laughs> 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 so, uh oh. I know. Cocktail hour fail. Doggy um, fail. I know what my dogs have brought to me. I know what my Ruby and my Lola and my Roxy have done for me. And if you give them a chance, you will get so much love. There's nothing like coming home and having someone just waiting for you. There's nothing like the unconditional love that an animal can give. And when, when you're sad and you're scared and you're alone and the walls are closing in, these animals, all they want is your love and they need a home. And these women are going out and rescuing them because if not, where would poor little Freddie be today? So get out there, help them, support them, and let's Freddy find hopes for them. I don't even. <laughs> oh, I'm so taking Freddie home, aren't I? <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Oh, thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you for what you do for animals. Thank you so thank you. much. Take care of our party. Hey everybody, we have a special treat for you right now. We have a kiss to build a dream on, sung by Damon and Nicole, and danced by Katie and Race, two of our favorite dancers here at the Gem Theater. Welcome to a beautiful place for Valentine's Day. Take it away, kids. A kiss before you leave me And my imagination Will feed my hungry heart Leave me one thing before we part A kiss to build a dream on When I'm alone With my fancies My romances Making believe that they're true Give me your lips for just a moment And my imagination Will make that moment live Give me what you alone can give A kiss to build a dream
moments for just a moment And my imagination will make that moment live Let's go backstage and do a shot. <laughs>